you, you know, we look at it, it's, it's really amazing, not just to see what it was like 100 years ago, but yeah. it was, according to history, it was that way 300, 400, 1,000 years ago from it's the worse. time that the Jewish people are, are thrown out in the second century by the Romans. Mm -hmm. It's conquered and reconquered multiple times. It never becomes a homeland or a capital city or even a significant city for any other people group until 1948, especially until 1967 when Jewish Jerusalem is, is back in the hands of Israel and everything begins to revive. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to a special edition of The Watchmen. It wasn't too long ago that the legendary American author Mark Twain said that Jerusalem had lost all its ancient grandeur and become a pauper village. Now, Twain wrote that during a visit to the Holy Land a little over 150 years ago, and I think if he could see Jerusalem today, he'd have a much different reaction. A great new book called Jerusalem Rising shows in stunning detail how Israel's ancient and ancestral capital has risen from the ashes to once again become one of the most beautiful cities in the world, just as the Bible said that it would. Author Doug Hershey joins us with the amazing on the ground story. Doug, welcome to The Watchman. Welcome to New York City. It's great to have you again. Always good to be with you. Yeah, and always good to get a great up close glimpse at your new books. We had Israel Rising. Mm -hmm. Now we have Jerusalem Rising, Doug, your latest, The City of Peace Reawakens. Love the book. Uh, love right the on. photos in the book, of course. We're going to get into it. But I want to ask you first and foremost you wrote this book about Jerusalem, God's city. What was your inspiration for the book? Because I've heard that the prophet Zechariah had a little something to do with this book. Tell us about that. Ezekiel 5.5 5 says God has placed Jerusalem in the center of the nations. And now is a time and a season when it seems like God is really beginning to center a lot of that back in our hearts. And so with the way that the city has revived, we're finding that uh, a lot of the things that are starting to happen were prophesied in the scriptures 2,600 years ago. So you mentioned Zechariah 8. Zechariah 8 uh, begins by saying, uh, the Lord saying, I'm going to return to Zion and dwell with my people. Old men and old women will Will dwell safely in the streets, kids will be playing in the streets, and towards the end of the chapter it talks about the nations flooding to Jerusalem. And all of those things have really been happening in a really historical way that we've never seen before that's really lining up with the prophecies. The concept of the book is so unique. Uh, the comparative photos, contemporary Jerusalem, not ancient Jerusalem, but Jerusalem just in the 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. How did you come up with this idea? We know the prophetic inspiration, of course, yeah. but a unique take, again, to have this comparative photography. People can see it here on the screen. In Jerusalem Rising, I uh, found the oldest photos of Jerusalem ever taken all the way back to 1844. And then comparing that with the actual photos, recreating the actual angles today, it's just, it's such a dramatic revival of a city. It is. But not just a revival of a city, reviving exactly the way scripture said that it would. That's right. It's jarring, but in the best way. Mid 1800s, look, Israel and Mark Twain put it rightly, and you show in this book, Jerusalem Rising, it was not what it is today, to say the least, a yeah. thriving first world nation. Yeah. Why your focus? on Jerusalem. Here's a little city in the mountains. There's meager yeah. water source. There's no natural resources. It's not on any trade route. It's not on a port. And uh, you know, there's no earthly reason. Why do people fight over Jerusalem? Why does it matter? There's no earthly reason why somebody would want Jerusalem, but a, a spiritual reason, yeah. that's another matter. Nobody cared about Jerusalem 100 years ago. But once the Jewish people are back in the land, especially after 1967, when all of Jerusalem is under Jewish sovereignty, really since biblical times, yeah. suddenly, you know, everything starts going crazy. Yeah. Uh, in the book, one of my favorite photos uh, is from 1933, where it's just showing an area right outside the Temple Mount being wow. used as a garden and a cabbage patch for, you know, cabbages and cucumbers. And that's less than 100 years ago. It's right. being used as farmland. And today, of course, Muslims are saying it's one of the holiest places. Well, you know, listen, it wasn't, it wasn't that holy 100 years ago when they're farming it. That's right. And so there are these stark contrasts that we're seeing yeah. all through the city that it's, you, you know, we look at it, it's, it's really amazing, not just to see what it was like 100 years ago, but yeah. it was, according to history, it was that way 300, 400, 1,000 years ago 
from the time that the Jewish people are, are thrown out in the second century by the Romans. Mm -hmm. It's conquered and reconquered multiple times. It never becomes a homeland or a capital city or even a significant city for any other people group until 1948, especially until 1967 when Jewish Jerusalem is, is back in the hands of Israel and yeah. everything begins to revive. I hate to even say this word, it almost sounds heretical, but Jerusalem was essentially a backwater for about 2,000 years. In 1844, there was an Ottoman census at the exact same year when there was these old photos that you'll find in Jerusalem Rising that tell us that there was only 15,000 people living in Jerusalem in 1844, a, a majority of 7,000 people that were Jewish. There was a Jewish majority yes. in 1844 in Jerusalem. To look at Jerusalem now, well over a million people, I mean, when the Bible talks about <laughs> reviving a city, he's going to multiply the people, he's bringing the, his people back from the north and the south, the east and the west, not just to, to Israel, but to Jerusalem specifically. You know, there, there are things that the prophets wrote about that are yeah. being fulfilled word for word, and that's some of what we're able to document, even just the beginning process of that in Jerusalem rising. Yeah. By the way, the book is much more than pictures. You have a lot of detail and content and history in here. Yeah. It's absolutely fascinating. In putting this book together and getting all these archival photos and contrasting them with the modern photos, mm -hmm. what are some of the transformations that struck you the most? Up until 1967, the Western Wall Plaza wasn't even a plaza. It was literally like a little alleyway that Jews would congregate in to pray. But to me, one of the most dramatic things of just being in Jerusalem isn't even so much, we, we talk about it's looking at the old stones, but it's talking about viewing the living stones. The, the amount of people that are back in Jerusalem in the last 100 years is stunning. It's right. becoming an international city that's influencing the world. and. If you continue to read in the book of Zechariah, there's a Jewish Messiah that's going to arrive on the Mount of Olives and enter into a Jewish Jerusalem to defend his people from the things that are going on. So if you are looking for the return of the Lord, it is actively connected to the city of Jerusalem and the revival of that city because that is the context of his return. That is where he's coming back. Absolutely. In Jerusalem. There's no coincidence that Jerusalem is literally the center of the world uh, on our maps, Doug. Yeah. What should Christians be aware of as they keep an eye on Jerusalem? You know, it's obviously the ancient and ancestral capital of Israel and the Jewish people, but as followers of Jesus, I think you just laid it out actually, we have a pretty big stake in this too. The stage is already being set. The Jewish yes. people are returning to the city. The city is reviving and it's unfolding exactly as the prophet said would happen. And for, for you and I that are following the Lord, if we're looking for His soon return, we are looking at the revival of Jerusalem as being a key and significant part in that. Prophecy is being fulfilled now, today in 2021, before our very eyes, yeah. and a good deal of it is happening in the city of Jerusalem. Great being with you, my friend. Thanks good so luck with the book, you. and congrats. We'll see you again soon. See you next year, maybe this year even, in Jerusalem. Let's do it. Let's do it. God bless, Doug. All Thank right, you. Man. Folks, again, the book is called Jerusalem Rising. You can pick it up at Doug's website or wherever books are sold. I actually have it on my coffee table right now in our living room, and it always sparks great conversation. Now, that clip with Doug was from our Watchmen TV show, if you like the newscast here on YouTube, you will love our weekly TV show on TBN, airing every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and Fridays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, again on TBN. Thanks for joining us here today on The Watchman. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.